hello and welcome back to the channel on today's tutorial i'm going to be sharing with you how to sew this beautiful two-piece shirt and palazzo trouser if this is something you like please stick to the end of the video and if you haven't yet subscribed please hit on the subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up let's dive right into today's video so here is my pattern from the previous video and i've gone ahead to cut it out so on the front pattern, I added half inch at the neckline area at the shoulder and beneath it, I added my folding allowance. Now on this pattern, I added half inch on top and my folding allowance at the lower part. For the back pattern, I just have one piece. And going to the front pattern, I have two pieces this way because you have to slit it open. Now I'm going to go ahead to place and I will go ahead to join the shoulder part with half inch. So after you're done doing that, the next step is to go ahead to fold our button allowance. Now on the video, we marked out two and a half inches. That two and a half inches, you're going to go ahead to mark it out. So remember, this is the two and a half inches on the pattern. So to make it easier for you just go ahead and mark out your two and a half inches so i'll go ahead and do that and after doing that go ahead and also mark at the other side now we're going to fold our button allowance with half inch in and then fold again to meet that point so this way it is easier for you and you're going to go ahead to pin it down you're going to repeat this for both sides of your shirt that has the button allowance go ahead and fold with half and then fold back till you get to that point if you use three inches for your button allowance go ahead to do so so after doing this i'm going to run a stitch at this point at the extreme end close to the folding allowance so this is my shirt after folding the button allowance place your armhole to meet so that you get the meat point of the shoulder notch it and go ahead to do so so what at the other side so why you're doing this is because we have a come down at the front part of the shoulder you want to make sure your armhole is meeting so now from that notched part go ahead and measure what you have at the armhole at this point so after measuring that we're going to go ahead to cut our sleeve to cut our sleeve you're going to fold with your bicep that is the biggest part of your arm divided by two plus one inch and then also add your sewing allowance so now i'm going to go ahead and mark half inch on top so now what i measured from my armhole is 9.3 and i'm going to make sure that i have 9.3 so i'm going to place my tape and i'll just draw a curve this is more like a freehand sketch of how to cut your sleeve without stress so i'll just measure make sure that what i have at the armhole curve is what i have at this point so 9.3 that is what i have so after that the next step is to go ahead to place my tape i'm going to get my shoulder to elbow measurement after getting my shoulder to elbow measurement i'm going to go ahead to mark the length of the sleeve that i want so the length of the sleeve i'm making use of is 22 inches because i'm going to go ahead and add about six inches or five inches to it to complete the sleeve so my shoulder to elbow is 13 inches now you're going to measure what you have around your elbow don't make it too tight because this is a shirt then i'll add one inch for my stitching allowance so i just added that just in case i want to make the sleeve a little free so after marking that i'm going to go ahead and go down to the lower part of my sleeve which is the wrist part now i'm going to mark what i have when you're measuring your shirt the sleeve for your shirt do not make it too tight and i'll go back and mark that one inch down and i will connect now i'm going to cut out this sleeve when cutting my sleeve i'm going to add half inch after the line which will serve as my joining allowance and i'll cut out my sleeve then go ahead to notch the center so we are going to place the notched part of this sleeve to the notched part of our shirt that's why we notched our shirt after we place the armhole together now i'm going to go ahead and open my sleeve and after opening the sleeve i'm going to take the shoulder now place that notch part meeting the notch part now 
you're placing it not on the joining but the notched parts that we have around the shoulder now you're going to stitch with half inch so after i'm done joining the sleeve i went ahead to iron my shirt so now i'm going to go ahead to join this part with half inch i'm going to join from this part with half inch down to the lower part so when i get to the lower part i'm going to measure about 6.5 inches remember we added a folding allowance 1.5 will be serving as our folding allowance and i'll measure 5 inches because by the side we're leaving an opening there so i'll go ahead and stitch up my shirt after stitching up my shirt, I went ahead to iron it so that it will relax. Now, the excess we have on this part, I'm going to go ahead to cut it out. Now, I'm going to go ahead to measure the neck of my dress. That's the neckline of my dress because we are going to go ahead to cut out the collar of this dress. After measuring it, I have 19.3 inches and I will go ahead to also still remeasure. So now that 19.3 inches, I'm going to place my tape and fold it into two. Whatever I have, I'm going to go ahead to place and I will mark on my paper. So after marking that, I'm going to go ahead to divide it into two. Now I'll fold my tape and I'm going to go ahead to mark. So from this point, I'm going to go up by half inch and I'm going to connect it down to the center of the pattern so after i'm done doing that i'll mark one inch up continue marking one inch after marking the one inch to the end i'm going to go ahead to connect so after connecting here we have our color stand that is ready after cutting out our color stand we are going to go ahead to cut out the color so i'll go ahead and cuff it a little at that point and here is the collar stand moving over to the collar of the dress so i'll go ahead and i will still measure out that 19.3 inches divided by two then i'll go up by two and a half inches make sure you draw a straight line before you start marking this out and after marking that two and a half inches i'm going to use my ruler place and i'll connect and draw a straight line after drawing a straight line the next thing i'll do is to come in by one inch at the lower part and after that i'll place my ruler and connect it to the tip now this is the color but before we go ahead and work on this we are going to go up by half inch and after that i will connect this to the end and the next step we are going to take is to use this pattern to cut out our collar so while cutting this we are going to cut two pieces for each side and for the gum stay that we are going to use inside the collar we are going to just cut exactly the same size but for the fabric we are going to be adding half inch on it so this is the color piece that i've cut out if you notice i added half inch on top below and in front and i also repeated that for this but for the gum stay we are using for this pattern i cut out exactly the same size why because we are going to iron gum stay on one part and we are going to make sure we have half inch round and just the same way i did this i'll repeat it at the collar of the dress so i'm done ironing and this is what we have we ironed on one piece of the collar so remember i said we are going to be cutting out two pieces each so this we are going to place one on the other side and we are going to turn it with half inch so go ahead and place and you're going to pin so the one we are working on first is the collar and not the collar stand so i'll go ahead and stitch leaving the lower part open so now i'm done stitching and the next thing you're going to do is to notch it all the way around and you're going to open and iron it so now i'm done ironing it and this is what i have so look at where the gum stay is sitting that is where you also place the collar stand the part of the collar where the gum stay is sitting that is the part that the collar stand will also be so go ahead and notch your collar to get the middle now you're going to place it and pin and you're going to also get the other part of your collar this way place and notch and 
you're going to go ahead to place it and make sure that the part you're pinning together is the part that is facing up now i'm going to take and pin after pinning it i'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way round after pinning all the way round you're going to go ahead to stitch with half inch so now after i'm done sewing this is what i have i'm going to go ahead to notch turn it up and i'll iron it to relax so here is my shirt and we're going to go ahead to add the color now i'm going to hold it together this way get the center of the neckline and i'm going to go ahead to notch it and i'm going to go ahead to place my collar the notch part of the collar to the notch part of the shirt and the part you're going to place on the collar first is the part that has the gum stay so that by the time you're done sewing you're going to the part that doesn't have gum stay will be the part that will be facing out now you're going to go ahead to pin the first part of the collar down to your shirt this way so after pinning it you're going to repeat it on the other side of your collar so after you're done pinning your shirt the next thing is to stitch up your shirt after stitching with half inch you're going to take the other part of the collar you're going to fold it in this way to cover up the half inch that you stitched now you're going to fold and pin after folding and pinning you're going to stitch from the front side and you're going to stitch on that line that you used in joining the collar to the neckline of the dress so now i'm done stitching the collar of the shirt and i've ironed out my shirt this is what it looks like now we're going to go over to the lower part and we're going to be stitching with half inch half inch because we didn't leave much allowance at that point and then stitch on this part fold it over this way and i'll stitch so you're going to do this to the both sides after doing that you're going to go ahead and fold with half inch half inch and stitch on it and you're also going to stitch with half inch folded into two at the back of your shirt so i'm done stitching up my shirt and this is what it looks like now we are going to add the little design on the sleeve of the dress so here is the organza and i folded it in so i'm just going to cut out very little i won't be needing much for this so i'll go ahead and cut about six inches which i reduced while i was sewing the dress after cutting it out this is what i have and i'm going to slit it into two so i didn't use a particular measurement for this i just worked it what i felt was okay for me so if you want yours to be full go ahead and use more organza at the sleeve of your dress now you can go ahead to fold or you can weave it out i folded mine and i'll create like a little ruffle and attach it to the sleeve of the dress so right this is my trouser pattern the front and the back pattern that i have cut out i'm going to unpin this so for the back i'm going to stitch with half inch all the way down and for this part i'll be stitching with half inch also at the crotch with half inch so now after stitching i want to go ahead and create the dart for my trouser and i'm going to place and mark my nipple to nipple divided by two which is after my half inch that i've stitched at the crotch and i'll mark about three and a half inches so i'll be creating three and a half or three inches that so go ahead and measure your nipple to nipple and measure three inches or 3.5 inches down now i'll go ahead and create a dart of half inch at both sides and i'll also repeat the same process to the back of the trouser and create my dart for it also so after i'm done doing that this is what i have now i'll place the trousers together the front side meeting the front side now i'm going to place it and i will go ahead to pin it down so after i'm done doing that next i'll place my pattern paper and mark where the 10 inches i measured from or you can go ahead and place your tape and mark that 10 inches we got from the waist to the hip point now insert your hip measurement or on, on that point or you can just go ahead and mark half inch and start shaping it 
from the upper part down to the lower part so that is what i did i just went ahead to mark half inch all through i want mine to be a bit free at the hip but you can also go ahead and insert your hip measurement at that point so i'll mark to the end and i'll stitch with half inch to the end at both sides so i'm going to go ahead and leave one side of my trouser open at the waist because i'll be attaching zipper at that point so now i'm done stitching and this is what i have on this part now i'm going to go ahead and fold my trouser um, remember we added the 2 inches folding allowance. Now I'll fold with half and 1 inch. So taking out that 2 inches allowance I added on the trouser. After folding the lower part, now you want to place your trouser together. Join it from the center and you pin. Now you'll be stitching it with half inch starting from that point down to the ending of your trouser. But before stitching with half inch, go ahead and pin your trouser down to the end. You're going to run half inch starting from that point down to the other side of your trouser. After I'm done stitching my trouser, this is what I have and I'll turn it to the right side. So if the waist of your trouser is a little big, you can just adjust it from the joining at the center. That is the part of your crotch, just stitch it more with half inch so this is the part that i have the opening at the waistline and the next thing is to cut out the band so to cut out your band is just to measure your waistline round add half inch on both sides for zipper allowance and half inch for stitching up allowance now my waistline is 28 plus half half inch for zipper allowance giving me 29 half inch for on both sides for stitching allowance i have 30 so now what i have for the width is four inches and you can make use of 2.5 but i don't want my band to be too big now i'm going to place and i will be stitching with half inch on both sides and i'll go ahead to iron it out so after i'm done sewing and ironing out this is what i have now there are several ways of adding your band so i'll just place and stitch with half inch throughout my waistline because i'm still going to weave my trouser that is why i am joining my trouser the waistband that way so after that i'll go ahead to add zipper by the side of the trouser so after stitching this is what i have before going ahead to add the zipper so now i'm going to go ahead to add the zipper and show you the final outcome of the dress so i'm done sewing and this is what my dress looks like if you find this tutorial very interesting and educative please hit on the subscribe button don't forget to join us in our next video thanks